And we're talking now about preservation of friction ridges. But as far as preserving these fingerprints, it's one of the most important things for a crime lab, for CSIs to do is to preserve the evidence to the extent possible. Now, sometimes we lose evidence and it deteriorates, it's temporary. Things like gases could be an actual evidence, a piece of evidence, but they will evaporate. There are certain techniques that we use and then they're temporary. So we have to preserve things to the extent possible. And sometimes we have to freeze things in time with photography and so forth. So with regard to friction ridge detail, methods of preservation include photography, print lifts, uh, the use of casting material. And although the two latter methods, the lifts and the casting do create a piece of evidence, we still need that photograph. It's important to get photographs of our fingerprints before we lift them. Now that's not always going to happen. You, know, you're, you may be in a department where they say, only photograph it if you think it's necessary. The rest of that is too time consuming. And, that's, and that may be fine for out at the crime scene, but when we're dusting in the lab, we have time to take photographs of things before we lift them. And we should not discount the use of photography, even when we're doing a lift or a cast. So as far as photography goes, this has been around for a long time, the old art of photography. And what you're looking at on the screen there is an actual fingerprint camera. This is an old thing that should be in you know, a display case in the lobby of the crime lab. Nowadays, though, what we're going to do is use a high quality digital camera, one that's able to do close up photography. We're going to be using digital photography, you know, 99% of the time now. But when we take our digital photographs, we want to use a raw format. When you shoot in raw format, the camera is not compressing your image to a smaller file. And normally a camera will compress an image to a JPEG and there's even different levels of compression. So what happens when that occurs is the camera actually throws out a lot of the information. And we want all the information when we photograph evidence. So the way to do that is to actually photograph in a raw format. Then later you open that in Photoshop or another program, and then you have all the detail and none of it has been uh, reduced. We can also scan images. So let's say you lift a fingerprint and you want to you know, input it to something, you can always scan it. Also, when you're doing APHIS, that's all scanning. It's going to scan your fingerprint cards, your images will then be used in APHIS. Also, we made sure that we want to make sure that we can do a close up. We've got to get in close to show as much detail of the fingerprint as possible. We use close up filters, close up lenses, lenses that are designed for that and other uh, devices. Another way to preserve our friction ridges is through collection. And collection is going to be print lifts and casting material. So dusting and lifting, that's the typical way we do it. And then also using casting material if we have a textured surface. Now, sometimes evidence is better dusted or processed at the crime lab. Now, if you have something really big that you can't transport, like fingerprints on a, on a door, you're not going to take the door off the hinges and take it to the crime lab for processing. You're going to dust right there at the crime scene. And many things we will dust. Uh, but some things might be uh, more, it might be more effective to dust at the crime lab. How can that be? Well, at the crime lab, 
you may have a workstation and many of these workstations will have a downdraft built into them, uh, lighting, all your different fingerprint powders right there in front of you, uh, alternate light source, fluorescent powders, um, you know, everything is a lot simpler to do if you're at your workstation. So that would be something to consider. When you take something from to the crime lab, though, you have to make sure that any potential fingerprints on that object are not disturbed. And so packaging properly, transporting properly is an issue. One way to collect is to use fingerprint lifters. And here we're also talking about fingerprint tape. That's a lifter. So we dust a surface, we use the lifter, the tape in this case, and then we apply it to a backing car. Fingerprint lifters are used after the application of fingerprint powders. The powder clings to the latent print deposits or contaminants already on a substrate, a surface. A lift is usually made with tape or a similar lifting material having the correct amount of adhesive to remove enough of the fingerprint powder without destroying the original item. Now there is a, a fingerprint tape that stretches more, polyethylene tape. It stretches a little bit, you can form it a little bit. So if you have a curved surface like a light bulb or a doorknob, it will work better on that. Now in this picture you see here, see all these little white circles? Well, that's not good. When you put your tape down, if you get bubbles, you will end up with these white spots. So we have to put down the tape where we smooth it out, starting at one end and down, almost like you're squeegeeing something. And this looks like the tape just went straight down and captured some air bubbles. The problem with that is where there's a bubble, the tape will not be touching the powder. And then when you lift it up, you have these white spots. The other possibility, however, and it's a little hard to tell from the picture, is that maybe the uh, surface was irregular. It had like little pockets. It was not smooth. And that's all that the fingerprint touched was the raised part and not the deep parts. So it could have been that, but this looks more like it's bubbles. And so that's something you want to avoid. Here's a hinge lifter being used. You can see that the Sticky side is down now, and this is the backing here, and then they lift it back up. It goes onto the backing. Come in different sizes. Gelatin uh, lifters. The advantage there is that they um, are pliable, so you can use them on surfaces like this. Also on something where you are afraid you're gonna pick up the background. So if you have a wall with peeling paint, I would use a gelatin lifter instead of normal fingerprint tape. Yes, fingerprint tape is not as tacky as other tapes, but the gelatin lifter is even less tacky and it should just bring up the powder alone. I've also used it to get fingerprints off of clothing. Now, off of clothing, it usually has to be something dense like denim or leather, uh, but I've gotten fingerprints off of those surfaces before and using a gel lifter works nicely. You're not picking up fabric with it. Casting material, that's gonna be the, usually a, a silicone material. 